Welcome back guys, this is Jason, KM4ACK. Today, we're going to talk about system check scripts. Stick around, and we'll get right to it. Real quick before we get going today, I've got to give a shout out to these guys. They're my latest patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'll leave a link to Patreon down in the description below. After my Dumb Mistake video came out and my Winlink Gateway video came out, I had a lot of emails with guys asking me how I wrote that system check script that automatically rebooted when things weren't running correctly. So I thought I would take a few minutes today and walk you through how you can write your own system check script. Now, I'm not going to do like I've done in the past and just give you a simple script to download. And the reason is there are so many variables that can differ from system to system that it would be nearly impossible for me to try to figure out exactly what would work in every single instance. So instead of just giving you a script, we're going to walk through how you can write your own system check script. Let's go ahead and head over to the Raspberry Pi and get started. Okay, so before we start writing the script, you need to understand the way Linux works. Linux, every time you start anything on a Linux system, be that an application or you open the file explorer or you open even the terminal window, a process ID is assigned to that particular process. And we're going to utilize that information to write our system check script. So, let me give you an example of this. I happen to know for a fact that Pat Winlink is running in the background. How can I prove that? Well, I can run PID of space and Pat, and it's going to return the process ID number of Pat Winlink that's running in the background. And it doesn't matter what the process ID number is, it's just if that is running, we get a number to work with. Now, at the same time, just like I knew that Pat was running, I know that Direwolf is not running. In fact, Direwolf's not even installed on the system. But if I type, let me get the mouse out of the way. If I type PID of Direwolf, you'll see that it just comes back to the command line and doesn't give me a number. So that lets me know that Direwolf is not running in the background. Okay, so now that we know the way the processes work and how we can get the process ID number of a particular application, let's go ahead and start writing this script. Out here on the desktop, I'm just going to right click and I'm going to say new file. And you can call this uh, check script whatever you want to call it. I'll just call it system check for this particular video. And I'll say OK. That's going to put a new text file out here on my desktop. So I'm going to right click and just tell it to open with a text editor. Now, you can use all kinds of different text editors to write scripts. I'm just using the regular old uh, text editor that's built into the Raspberry Pi. If you've got something that you prefer, well, by all means, use it. The other thing I like to do is I like to turn on line numbers when I start working with scripts. So to do that, you just want to come up to view and then put a check mark by line numbers. It may make things a little bit easier for you should you run into any errors. And one last thing before we get into this, remember that Linux is case sensitive. So you have to have your case right in order for things to work. A capital G and a lowercase g is not the same thing in a Linux system. Also, in addition to that, uh, spacing can be important. So if you see a space uh, in a command that I am writing, but you don't put it in yours, that's probably going to cause a failure. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to give the script a shebang line. So that's a pound, exclamation point, forward slash bin, forward slash bash. And what that does is that just tells the system what kind of script it's working with when we call it from the command line. Now, the next thing we need to do is we need to have this script run that PID command 
and assign that information to a variable. So let's go ahead and define the variable here, and I'm just going to call it pat. Now notice I've got everything in uppercase, so when I call the variable later in the script, it's got to be in uppercase. If you wrote it all in lowercase, you'll need to reference it later in the script with all lowercase. But I'm going to say pat equals, and I'm going to give it the backtick mark. Hopefully you can see that on the screen right there. And then I'm going to give it that command of PID of space pat. And I'm going to give it the backtick mark again. Now, just for testing, because I want to kind of walk you guys through what's happening every step of the way through this process, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell the system to echo out the pat variable. Now, we reference that variable by using the dollar sign and then pat. So, right now, the only thing it's going to do is it's going to run this command, assign it to this pat variable, and then we're going to echo out the pat variable, which will be the result of this command. So I'm going to press Control S to save my text document, and let's go back over to the terminal. Now, we will need to move to the desktop directory because that's where our script is living right now, is on the desktop. And then let's go ahead and make the script executable. So chmod plus x space system check, which is the name of the file that I created. Now that file is executable. So to run that uh, file, we just run dot forward slash system check. We'll go ahead and press return, and you see that we got the 528, which is the process ID number that we saw earlier when we just ran that PID of pat command. Okay, so hopefully all of that is making sense to you so far. Let's go back to our script that we're writing, and we're going to get rid of this echo line that we did. What we want to do is we need to test to see if that pat variable has information in it. Remember, it doesn't matter what process ID Linux assigns it. We just want to know if it has a process ID number, because if it does, then the application is running. If it doesn't, then it's not. So how are we going to test to see if that pat variable has data or not? Well, we're going to use something called an if-then statement. So we're going to start that by just typing if and the space bar. And we're going to give it an opening square bracket. The next thing we're going to do is give it another space and we're going to type hyphen Z. Again, another space, and we're going to say string pat. Now, what this is doing, we'll finish this up in just a second, but what this is doing, the dash Z says, if this variable is empty, I want you to do something. So, let's go ahead and finish up this if statement. We'll give it another space after that, uh, where we define the variable pat, and we'll give it the closed square bracket, followed by a semicolon. Another space, and then. Now we're going to say echo, and we're going to tell it what we want it to echo out. So I'm going to say echo uh, pat isn't running. And we'll give it the closed quotation mark. Now we have to finish off our if statement with fi which closes that if statement. And we're going to save that file again. Now, let's go back over to the terminal window. And again, we're going to run that same script, dot forward slash system check. So what do you think is going to happen right here when I run this? All right, now that you've locked in your answer, let's go ahead and run that. And it does nothing. It just returns us out to the command line, which is exactly what it's supposed to do. And here's why. Let's go back and take a look at the script again. We said if the pat variable is empty. So here's our pat variable. The dash Z says check to see if the variable is empty. If it's empty, then we want you to do something. In this case, echo out, 
echo out, Pat isn't running. However, Pat is running, so the script did nothing. It looked at the PID of Pat. It decided that it did have a PID number, so there was nothing left to do. Now, let's do this again. Let's go back over to our terminal window, and I'm just going to run sudo kill all pat. Oop, uh, kill all pat. There we go. So now, if I run PID of pat, you'll notice that pat is no longer running. We just killed it, so it's not running in the background. Now, if we run our system check file again, what do you think is going to happen this time? Well, you're right. It's going to tell us that Pat isn't running. And this is exactly how we can use this system check script. So maybe instead of just echoing out, Pat isn't running over here, you might want to tell the system to, say, reboot. So we could do sudo reboot and save that out. Now, I'm not going to run it, but if I ran this script right now, it would look for this process ID number of Pat, decide that that variable was empty because Pat wasn't running, and it would go ahead and reboot the system. Now, let's build on this just a little bit. What if I want the system to check not only if Pat is running, but if Direwolf is running? So what we're going to do is create a new variable, and I'll just call this one DW. Again, we're going to give it the equal sign, we're going to give it the back tick, and we're going to say PID of direwolf. And we'll give it the back tick symbol again. That'll close that off. So now, just like we did here, we can take this, and I'll just do a copy, and we'll come down a couple of lines and paste it in. But we need to change our variable because we don't want it checking pat twice. So we'll just tell it to check the direwolf variable in this instance here. So now, and let me get these reboot commands out of here. And I simply replace those with echo uh, statements here to tell me Pat isn't running or direwolf isn't running. So again, back in our terminal window, if I run the system check, this time it's going to look at Pat and direwolf and figure out which of those isn't running. And in this case, neither Pat nor Direwolf was running. Now, let me restart the Pat server real quick. And now that Pat is running again, because I just restarted it here with this command, let's go ahead and run the system check script again. This time, it only gave me one statement coming out, because Pat was running, so the script didn't do anything, but it saw that Direwolf was not running, so it went ahead and echoed out, Direwolf isn't running. Okay, so now that we have our script written, it doesn't do us very much good unless it is running on a routine basis in the background. And the way we're going to accomplish that is we're going to use something called a cron job or cron tab. So let's go ahead and clear the screen here. And if you will remember, uh, I'm going to run the ls command here. Our system check script is on our desktop or in our desktop directory. Now I'm going to leave it here just for the sake of this demo, but you can put that script anywhere that you would like it on your system. Now something else I'm going to run here is called the pwd command or print working directory. And that just tells us the full path of the directory that we're in at this current moment. So you can see we're on the desktop and the name of our script is system check. So let's go ahead and jump into our cron tab. So we're gonna run cron tab space hyphen E. Now, if this is the first time you've been into your cron tab, when you run that cron tab space hyphen E command, it may ask you which editor you want to use. I always choose the nano editor well, because it's the easiest. All right, so once we're in here, we need to create 
an entry so that our script will be run every so often. So in my case, I'm going to run this particular script every 10 minutes. And we do that by entering a star. Just notice I'm at the bottom of this file. You could do it at the top, it doesn't really matter. I'm gonna enter a star forward slash 10. We're gonna give it a space and we're gonna give it four more stars with spaces between each of those. Now, if you wanted to run this on a different schedule, you could do that. If you wanted to run it every five minutes, you could replace the 10 with a five. Uh, if you just wanted it every 30 minutes, then obviously replace the 10 with 30. And if you need more help in constructing this right here, I'm gonna show you guys real quick. We're not gonna go into too much detail, but there is a website called crontab-generator.org and I'll leave a link to that either right here across the screen or down in the description below. Uh, but it's pretty easy. You would just tell it how many minutes you wanted it to run or how many hours you wanted it to run. Uh, you'll go ahead and click the submit button at the bottom, well, it's actually called Generate Crontab Line. Once you create that, then it will give you the exact information that you need to enter. Puts it in right up here at the top of the page, but you can copy that and paste it into your Crontab instead of doing it manually. So once we've got this first section defined, now we just need to put the path to our script. So remember it was forward slash home, forward slash pi, forward slash desktop, forward slash, so that's the path and then the uh, script name. Uh, so we'll give it system check. Now we can just go ahead and press control S to save that file and control X to exit out of it. And you'll notice right here that it says installing new cron tab. So that's it. Our job is set up and ready to go. And every 10 minutes, it's going to run our script in the background. So there's a look at how you can write your very own system check script for something like your APRS Digipeter or your WinLink gateway. That way, if things aren't running as they should be, the system can go ahead and automatically reboot itself. If you found this information helpful, be sure to give us a thumbs up before you head off. We will see you guys on the next one. Until then, 7-3.